Hey guys, what is going on? Alex here from Oaks Gaming coming back to you guys with another Paragon deck building guide. And today for you guys, I am going to be doing the new hero Morgesh. Um, I figured I'd do her for you guys because she just came out and if you don't know how to build her, I want to give you an idea of how I decided to build her. And the build works pretty good so far. Um, I'll go over the abilities of her first before I get into the build for you guys. Um, R2, her dagger, pretty basic, everyone has a basic attack. It does 56.71 basic damage, which is pretty decent early on. And then you have her mark, which her mark goes hand in hand with her hive and her alt. So her mark marks a hero within her range dealing damage and her doll takes the shape of that hero. So once you do that, you can target them anywhere on the map with your alt and deal damage to them. So before you can alt them, you have to mark them first and then you can alt them whenever you want. And also when they're marked, they take additional ticks of damage from your hive, which is a damage over time ability. She throws a hive of insects that explodes and deals damage on direct hit and applies a stack and it does damage per tick over eight seconds and it does extra damage if you mark them and then her last ability is her swarm where she transforms into a swarm of insects granting her max movement speed and when she passes through enemies uh, heroes or minions she gets one stack of health regen and the stacks are limited to five so you can't, if there's like a huge wave of minions coming into your tower, you're only going to get uh, stacks for five of those minions. You're not going to get it for the whole wave. And without further ado, I will get into the deck build for you guys. And this is my Morgesh Bad Juju deck build. Now, before I get into the build with you guys, um, I'm just going to tell you my opinion on her right now. I think she is absolute bullshit she is way too strong right now i know she's going to get nerfed if she doesn't i will be completely surprised i mean she can just devastate people especially carries early game with the damage that her abilities do it's just ridiculous but with that being said i will tell you guys how i build her so i would prefer right now to play her in off lane um because you can really assault the carry and it's a pain in the ass for the other team you can play her mid it works well there too but i would definitely play her off lane and i start with a health potion a mana potion and a cast token reason being i don't start with a healer token because of her uh circle where she goes through uh minions and gets health regen stacks so you get a little sustain there so you might as well get a little bit more mana regen and some damage while you're at it. Now, after this, I go with my Brawler's Ward, which I just fill with three one-point minor strikes. And this is my first ward. I'm going to end up switching it out with a Major Sword with more damage later on. But this is just to get me going with some extra damage. And then I will go with my two Adamant Edges, which actually are a part of the build. And I put two one-point Lesser Healths and a Minor Cast in both of them. So you get a little sustain with health it's not a lot but it's enough maybe to help you out in a certain situation then um, if you have the points you could switch your brawler's ward with your major sword which i filled the major sword with three uh two three point major casts and a two point cast um i probably would just hold on to my brawler's ward just for a little bit longer and then I would probably go with my Thick Blood, which is actually a really cool card for her. So it's 4 points, you get 12 power and 30 mana. And on ability hit, you apply a Blight to enemies for 4 seconds, which reduces their healing by 40%. So when you hit them with that Hive, it's just going to keep doing those ticks of damage and whittling them down. And even if they have Lifesteal or Health Regen, it's going to make it really hard for them to heal back up which is super important with her, which is why I really like that card for her. And I fill that with three three-point casts. Then I will probably go with my Tainted Magic, 
which is an activatable. You get 1.4 health regen and 0.3 mana regen. And when you activate it on six seconds on hit with ability, apply, apply poison stack to targets for six seconds. So how I would use this is I would activate it, mark them so they get a poison stack there. Then I would throw the hive at them, get another poison stack there. And they're already taking damage over time from the hive as it is. So this is just going to be even more mean. And I fill this with a two point spark and two one point chronos or sparks, whatever you have. It's just good for a little bit of sustain mana wise. Um, then you can go with your necro veil, which I fill with three three point major casts. And this has two ability pen and six power. And its passive is on player kill, enter the shadow plane for three seconds. And this is good for if you have someone marked and there's a bunch of enemies around you and you kill them and then you just disappear which is kind of nice for you to get out of there and if you haven't already you can switch that brawler's ward with your major sword from earlier and the reason i have the thick blood and the necrovail as such expensive cards is so that i can get these uh six point cards early on and i can still keep them in the build it's just kind of nice um so in the end you're gonna have a necro veil with three three point major casts a tainted magic with a two point spark and two one point basic chronos a thick blood with three three point major casts a magus ward with two three point major casts and a cast and you're gonna have two adamant edges with two one point lesser health and a one point cast and I also have a bunch of cast tokens in here for spare points I have left over when I'm leaving base. And I also have an extra mana potion just in case I need it. And with her I run the Archmagus. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious what you guys think about Morgesh right now. And what you would like to see change from her. Me personally, I think that her mark does way too much damage. I think they need to dim that down a little bit. And I also think they have kind of an issue with the ticks of damage from her hive. I think it's a little bit too much, personally. I don't have a problem with her ult. You know, if you get marked and you happen to be somewhere on the map and she ults you, you know, whatever. It's her ult. It's supposed to do a good amount of damage. So that's whatever I think. But I think as far as how much damage her mark does, how much damage those ticks of damage from the hive do... I think it's a bit much, and I think that is personally what I would like to see change from her. So let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think about her, because I'd really like to know. I'm really curious. And if you guys like this build and you're new to my channel, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate the support. I am on Facebook and Twitter as well, and I will leave the links below for you guys on that. And for you guys who are already subscribed, as always, guys, I really appreciate the support and you coming back every week and watch my videos. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.